It's 8 o'clock on Thursday the 1st of June. Prince Charles has voiced his concern over genetically modified food, questioning whether it's needed to be listening to it. We are not having pop music on. I don't want pop music on. I don't want anything on. Not at breakfast time. Trying to learn some lies. You never that coming through the ceiling every five minutes. Not from me, you don't. You tell her to stop chewing so loud. It's like living in a zoo. Charlotte, how the hell much cereal have you got there? Do you know how much a packet of that costs? Here we go. I'm growing. Money, money, money. Me feeding. And have you bought your mother a birthday present? I don't know why I have to live in this cultural backwater. Have you bought your mother a birthday present? Yes. Why when's a birthday? Today, ignorance. I haven't got any money. Well, where's your pocket money? Spent it. Yeah. That's not fair. And don't you go swanning off out tonight because we've got this barbecue organised. Have we been invited to a barbecue? Oh, God, if she gets any slower, she'll stop. Barbecue? Have you been invited to a barbecue? Yeah, we're having a barbecue. Shut for your up. birthday. Oh, what a kind thought. Happy birthday. Oh. Well, I pretend I don't know. <laughs> Who have we invited? Well, there's no point in pretending now, is there? I hope you've invited the neighbours. I've invited the Hartnells. Have you invited the Skidmores? God, no, Mother. Well, you can't not invite the Skidmores if you've invited the Hartnells. You want them, you invite them. Is Virginia coming? <clears throat> I'll ring her. Oh, David, you know how busy she gets. I will ring her. I'm going to work. Easily, I'm late. <coughs> oh, Sarah, I forgot to test you on your audition piece. Too late. But the parents take an interest in what the children are doing. Normal parents. Sorry. Back in Rupert. Who's putting you through? Back in Rupert. Can I help you? I'm sorry, that one's just one moment. Here's the female. Back in Rupert. Mrs. Braithwaite. Hi, Keith Kershaw. Sorry to have kept you waiting. That's all right. You found us all right then? Do come this way. Hi, Tanzan. Is Virginia's woman? Is she there? Still in bed? <sighs> Never mind. Ask her to give me a ring, will you? And are you all right? Good. Okay then. Bye. Bye. Hello? Pam! Today? Oh. No, 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 that's fine, that's fine. Usual time? Yes, I can pick Mr. Topless up. And Mrs. Riley. Don't go buying just any old rubbish with that ten pound note. Charlotte! It's to buy your mother a present! Right! Charlotte! Oh, Charlotte! Has Mr. Whiteley's magazine come in? Under the counter! You are? Under the counter! I can't hear what the daft bag is saying. Under the counter. Anybody think I'm under the counter? 
the counter and you want to turn that racket off and get your lazy backside down here. I'm in the back. Do you have it in here? I'm bloody sick of it. Yeah, I'm sick of you at all. Yeah, well, you want to get out of the bath and get your send down here, you fat girl. You heard me. There's four queuing down here. There's four waiting. Oh, guess what? They're queuing out of door and out street. You liar. Ah, I'm not going to be a singleton. Come on, put out your notes. Shut up! <clears throat> Alison, can I call you Alison? Oh, yes. Great, what can I do for you? It's delicate. I'm not entirely sure, just yet. I see. You see, the thing is... It was my birthday last week. Happy birthday. Oh, thank <laughs> you. And uh, my daughter, Charlotte, she... Are you good at your job? Uh, I like to think so, yeah. The thing is, Mr Kershaw... Keith, please. Keith. I don't want someone who's good at their job, primarily. I want someone who's, who's basically competent, of course, but, but more importantly, I want someone who I can trust. Don't mind me! Sorry, sorry, Denise. Happy birthday. <sighs> Welcome to the old bugs department. <laughs> Are you and Colin busy at all this evening? Oh, no, we're having a little barbecue. Oh. David meant to ask you, but... Fun. What time? Seven-ish. Yeah. And the boys, if they're not doing anything. Great. We'll be there. Here, how's your Virginia going on? Well, she's doing fine, as far as we know. Yeah? Morning. Somebody forgot to lock the back door when they came in last night, Virginia. Oh, shit. Sorry. Again. Hello? Yeah, oh, and the kitchen light was left on all night. Again? I'm sorry. Oh, and your mother rang earlier. Hello? Have you forgotten it's your mother's birthday? Oh, damn shit! For God's sake, who used my Marjorie Thomas and Ashtray? Sorry, Dad. A barbecue. We're having a barbecue for your mother. Hello? Can you keep the noise down? I can't hear me, Dad. It's you, isn't it? You've done this. Piss off. No, not you, Dad. What were you saying? What's going on? Who's that shouting? Your daughter is a slob, Mr. Braithwaite. An S O L B slob. Oh, you can tell she's reading physics, can't you? And she's a lesbian. You're dead. Have you got that? Duh, eh, duh, dead. Hello? Virginia? Sorry, Dad. Listen, eight o'clock tonight. Be there, all right? Yeah, right, fine, fab. Bye. Good morning, Mr. Braithwaite. Morning. Mr. Deacon's coming in at half past to discuss his mortgage repayment situation. I've warned him that the outlook is bleak and we're not a charity. Okay. And how are you fixed for this dinner time? Oh, um, busy, I'm afraid. It's Alison's birthday. We're having a barbecue. I've got to go to Sainsbury's. Callous mercenaries plunging their weapons deep into my softness. Like a baby cow shot through the head, they collapse. Bleeding and die. Screaming, wailing, pleading. Covered in my own offal. Do you like it, Kieran? It's very brutal. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a tree and I'm angry. <laughs> Do you like it? You weren't listening. No, no, I was. No, you weren't. I'm not stupid. What are you doing, Kieran? I was just... You're crowding me, invading my space again. <laughs> you just think I'm a sex object. No, I don't. Yes, you do. <sighs> Everybody thinks we're going out together. Why aren't we? You know why? It's because I'm in love with someone else. I'm sorry. 
Sarah, he's a teacher. He wouldn't touch you with a barge pole. You don't know that. And anyway, he's gay. He's a queer, it's a well-known fact. Yeah, I know that. That's why he's so sensitive and gentle and <laughs> fantastic. And why? He doesn't like girls. He'll like me, especially when I'm his Antigone. You reckon? You're just jealous. You're just silly and immature and jealous. You come into our barbecue tonight for my mum's birthday. What barbecue? You're dead. <laughs> Have I been to the toilet? Just now, Mr. Topless. Mm. It's no good. I'll have to go again. Mr. No, and I'm not going to. I'm never off toilet. Your ankles will swell up, you dozy pillar. Get it took. <laughs> you beggar off, I mind your own flame of business. You beggar off, you senile old sod. I was only trying to help. Oh, look at that face. It's like a cracked ass. It's being so cheerful as keeps him going. Will you sing for us, Alison, love? It's your birthday. I'll play piano. I want to set up my own company, my own business. I see. Doing uh, what, exactly? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> right. Uh, what sort of capital have you got? Well, a certain sum, shall we say. But I will need an accountant. When you set up your business yes. doing something you haven't decided yet? Uh, well, I have got a vague idea. You see, I think I want to help people. Do you? Yes. Right. Have you been to a small business advisor? No. Well, then I suggest you do. No, I want an accountant. To make sure that monies are allocated correctly without waste, tax-wise. Right from the beginning. You see, it's all a mystery to me and I don't want to get into trouble. Right, yeah. Um, why don't you come back and see me in a few weeks when, when you've decided what it is uh, you want to do and who you want to do it for? And that shit. Sorry. Um, do you mind if I... Sorry, do you mind if I make a quick call? Oh, yes, whatever. You carry on. Hi, Simon. It's Keith. I just got the uh, memo. Uh, the key thing here is not to panic. Mortgages and loans and God knows what. Yeah, we can talk nervous. Elaine, why don't we just do it? And we'll talk about anything you like. No, because you won't. That's what we came here for, I thought. I'm fed up of what? This. Doing it like this. I thought you liked it. There comes a time when you need something more. I'm not leaving Alison. I mean, that's understood. It's always been understood. I love you. Well, 
I'm very fond, obviously, of you. You just want somebody who can shag. We'd better get back. There's no point talking like this. Look, if you're going to change the ground rules, it's time to blow the whistle on it, isn't it? Elaine? Eh? Yeah. What? It's a little something for your birthday. Oh, Marion, you shouldn't have. Why not? It's... I've nobody else to give out to, and it's... Anyway, it's now to... Well, I'll see you next week. Ta-ta. Bye. Right, but what were the figures for the first quarter? No, 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 I can wait. Perhaps I should put a few more cards on the table. Uh-huh. The reason I want your advice is I've come into some money. I'm listening. I won £38 million on the Euro Lottery last week and I don't quite know what to do with it. Well, that's understandable. As I say, I... I I know I want to help people with it, to do something useful. No, don't do anything, Simon. Just leave it with me. OK. Uh, I'm not going to charge you for this consultation, Mrs Braithwaite. I'm simply going to give you the benefit of my advice, which is to go to the Small Business Advisory Service. They are very nice people, and I'm sure they'll sort out all your queries and questions and any other bits of information you require to set up your business. Really very good luck. Oh, press the button. There's a button. Press it. Bottom left. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm not a list person. these. Sundays are like that, aren't they? Everything goes wrong and then one thing, just one thing, and it's like the straw that breaks the camel's back. I'm just the same. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're an accountant? Not a very good one, apparently. Huh? To be a good accountant, to be a good accountant at Thacker and Wurberg, there are certain qualities required which I lack. Unscrupulousness, immorality and greed. You didn't sack me, I resigned. Good for you. No, it isn't good for me. It's decidedly not bloody good, frankly. Thank you, you've been very kind. I'd like to talk to you. I'm going to have to let Alison go. Dad liked her. Sorry? Alison, the home help. Oh, that's my name, Alison. Is it? How long has he been...? Senile. He had a stroke about 18 months ago. I'm sorry. Well, he was in the hospital to start with. I was so relieved when they told me he wasn't going to die. You see, I assumed that once he regained consciousness, he'd make a full recovery. But they don't, do they? Not always. No. I didn't want to put him in a home, not the sort we could afford anyway. But apart from that, I didn't want to put him in a home because I wouldn't want to be put in a home. So I suppose there was some cowardice involved as well. I think that's very selfless. No. I think it was cowardice. Your husband, is he still...? No, he left. He couldn't stand it. So then there was no money. So then I had to pick up the reins again, not very successfully. 
I'm sorry. You wanted to talk to me about something, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did. If, um, if you're sure it's a good time. Of course. Go ahead. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I wanted to tell you about my birthday last week. We were having a barbecue. It was a secret, a surprise for me. Only I knew, because Charlotte had spilled the beans at breakfast time. Charlotte's my youngest. Can you tell her not to follow me round all the time? It's embarrassing. I mean, why hasn't she got any friends of her own? Why isn't she normal like other people's little sisters? I mean, can't you send her to a special school where they know how to look after children who aren't normal? What's happened to her classes? I don't know. I'll break more than her glasses next time. Want some more chicken? It isn't cooked through. I don't care. You'll die. Good. <laughs> nice food. So you're at Sainsbury's with your friend. <laughs> Mother insisted on inviting the Skidmores. Where's Virginia? I've not seen Virginia. Mum, have a top up. Oh, no thanks. Have you seen what they're doing to your flowers? Right. Oh, God, it's embarrassing. Didn't you ask Kieran round? No, I didn't ask Kieran round. I didn't want to embarrass him. Hi, sir. Hello, Phil. What's at this sofa? There's so many guests. Where's your mum and dad? Uh, my dad's in your house waiting for the lottery results. My mum's just gone to the bog. I think she's pissed. Oh, dear. Yes. Has anybody seen Virginia? Birthday. Oh. Mwah. Mwah. Mum, Mum, this is Megan and Mike Hartnell, our new next door neighbours. I told you about them. Oh, oh, goodness, so it is. <laughs> I've seen you on the television <laughs> in that advert. <laughs> if you want to keep your pussy cushy, feed her pussy bushy. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike writes novels. Oh, goodness me. Oh, when he's not lecturing at the Polytechnic. University. Alison, happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Megan, Sarah's auditioning for a play at school. Oh, Antigone. Wow. I said you might give us some useful hints and tips. Mm. I'm auditioning for the play and all. Aren't Sarah? Are you really, Phil? Very good. That's right. Look. <laughs> what? Is that woman off the cat food, Dad? <laughs> to keep your pussy cushy, feed it pussy mushy. Une fois de plus, voici les numéros gagnants du tirage de ce soir de la toute première Euro Loterie. And once more, here are the winning numbers for tonight's first ever Euro Lottery draw. Eight, nine. 14, 25, 27, and 38. Don't forget every celebration. You are the one out. Transmitted live from Britain, Bulgaria, Europe. 38 million. Yes. Well, you must be very popular at home now. Well, that's the thing, you see. I haven't actually told them yet. You haven't told them? I intend to, eventually. But the thing is, you see... I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Pauline. Pauline. The evening I won, before I knew I'd won, it was all so pleasant, and then someone started talking about the lottery, what they'd spend it on if they won, and then someone else started arguing that there shouldn't be a lottery at all. Of course, the mistake your average man in the street makes is in assuming you know, that winning however many millions will instantly make you happy. Instantly. Take away all your problems. Well, I'll tell you what, pal. If you win, you can give it to me, all right? Because we wouldn't want to make you miserable, would we? When, in fact, he's going to be left with all the same neuroses, the same self-doubt. Screwed up and rich or screwed up and poor. I know which I'd choose. The point being that we're encouraged to think of such a huge sum of money as some kind of panacea. When, in fact, it's potentially a huge burden. It's a massive responsibility. Oh, dear. Well, on balance, I think I'd risk it here, David. Uh, yes, on balance, I think, probably. Well, 
You shouldn't take me. What satisfaction can you get from money that's just been arbitrarily thrown at you for no good reason? Has he ever been poor? Have you ever been poor? Mum, the pig's eaten too much. It's being sick in the bathroom. <laughs> of course I've been poor. Well, what passes for being poor in this country? But you're poor, don't you? What with your four bedrooms and your two cars and your satellite dish and your telly in every crevice. <laughs> My darling, shut up. You've been boring. Oh, 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 being boring, am I? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's interesting. Mildly. See, being poor, your kind of poor, is something no amount of money's gonna rescue you from. <laughs> He's a drunk. That's why it's so sad that week in, week out, you fill in your sad little bit of paper, thinking with your sad little brain that if, if, it Lord be praised, you actually win, which you haven't got to hope in hell of doing anyway, somehow your life's gonna be transformed into something beautiful and, and meaningful and and bearable. Well, it won't. Be grateful for what you've got. That's the point. Make what you've got meaningful and bearable. Talks out of his ass, doesn't he? Why don't you try thinking about... Oh. Mm. Mm. Is it all up? Mm. I think so. Okay. Lie down. Mm. Why don't we all agree? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Cigarettes? No, open it. Oh, a lottery ticket. Thank you. If you win, I want half. I think that's probably the point. You'll chuck your job, you have no function. You don't even be filled with nothing bigger than what to buy next. Oh dear. The whole concept is irresponsible. The whole concept is based on greed. And what's wrong with greed? Well, yes, we can get into that if you read. Really greed want is to. the mother of invention. Necessity. What? Necessity is the mother of invention. It boils down to the same thing. It most certainly does not. Anyway, get out of the point I was making earlier. I wouldn't bother, pal, because nobody's listening. That doesn't make me wrong. Pal. It got quite heated. Actually, it became rather unpleasant. Chaucer. Oh! And it made me think that, that if I ever did win, if I wasn't careful, it might cause more harm than good. You must be very restrained. Yes, I can be. You see, I'm very lucky with my family. We have our problems, of course. David's always worried about work. In Virginia, I sometimes worry that she's not happy at university. She won't look at you twice. Piss off. And Sarah takes everything so very seriously. I told her. I warned her. I said, don't invite them. And Charlotte's at that awkward age. But I love her. I love them all. And we're so well off. We are, really. We've got everything we need and a little bit more besides. If suddenly there was more, a lot more, I think it could spoil them. It would change their ambitions, their aspirations, their whole outlook on life. And I couldn't help thinking it'd be for the worse. Is everybody gone? Virginia? Hmm. Tans is sleeping in your room. No. She left without you telling me. Right, I'm supposed to get back to York now. What'd you do that for? I don't know. Are you watching this film? No. What are you after? Lottery results. One, two, three. Would you like one? Thank you. 
this life. Mom, everyone. Huh? Mm, stupid question. It's like the first time you find out you're pregnant. You know you ought to be happy. You know you ought to be over the moon, but you don't be. Just in case you're wrong. Just in case there's something you've missed or not understood. Just because it seems so unreal. Just because it's the sort of thing that only ever seems to happen to other people. So what are you going to do? Well, I've got to claim it first. You haven't claimed it. Not yet. And then what I want to do, what I think I want to do is... I want to help people. I want to set up a company, an organisation that helps people. I've already started dropping hints at home that I'm thinking about going back to work, so... But what sort of people? Anyone. Everyone. I've no idea. People are always asking for money, aren't they? You mean like a charity? If you like. You see, with my money and your expertise, we could spend it wisely. And I think it'd be terribly interesting, don't you? Don't go away. some moral support before you went in. So, what are you going to say? Oh, it was only a first year exam. Well, that'll go down well. She'll see the funny side of it. She must have a sense of humour. Did you know that if you were to fold a cigarette paper 42 times, it would reach the moon? Did you know that? No, I did not know that. I got where I am today without knowing that. There would be certain technical problems in achieving this feat. Once folded 42 times, a cigarette paper may be very thick, but it is also rather narrow. More absurd calculations, which are all wrong anyway. Etc., etc., 0.7 to the minus 15 meters. This is more than half the width of the cigarette paper reaching from the Earth to the moon. And already the electron orbitals will be pretty screwed up. By folding the cigarette paper once more, it would actually be possible to split the nucleus. If Rutherford, spelled incorrectly, had rolled his own cigarettes, he too would have made this fundamental observation, and so saved himself an awful lot of time experimenting with nuclear reactors. I can only assume you didn't do any of your coursework, which is why you wrote this pile of shit instead. I'm sorry, Virginia. This was one too many. I met with the Board of Studies examiners this morning. You're being asked to leave. That means you're being sent down, but we say asked to leave because it sounds nicer. Well, firstly, I'd like to thank everyone for auditioning. And the good news is, there's parts for everyone. Yes. And now, some people's parts are bigger than others, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's life. <laughs> okay, here goes. Um, Antigone. I'd like to ask Lucy to play Antigone. Well done, Lucy. <laughs> uh, Kate, I'd like you to be as Manny. Yes. yes. Well done. Uh, Rachel, I'd like to ask you to play the nurse. And now the boys, uh, Kieran, I'd like you to be Creon. Phil, Phil, I'd like you to be human. Uh, Tim, Sean and Alex, I'd like you to be the soldiers. Now, the chorus is going to be made up of everyone else. So, uh, no gloomy faces. 
and no whinging. All right, come on. Let's get these chairs shifted. Why Jane Crowther, by the way? Because Jane's my middle name and Crowther's my maiden name. Makes sense. The press never made that connection. Right, so Jane Crowther Holdings has been set up as a limited company and you own 100% of the shares. 35 million will be transferred this morning into the company account and I'll keep back 3 million as liquid to start the ball rolling. Right. And then if we get fund managers to invest the 35 million, your annual income will be in the region of 4 million. So, in the long term, we'll have a lot more than 38 million to play with. Oh, absolutely. And what we have to do next is set up the Jane Crowther Trust. That way, all the profits from Jane Crowther Holdings will go into the trust. You see, normally you'd pay a huge amount in tax, but if you transfer the profits into the trust, it'll be tax-free. Well, you've certainly been doing your homework. It's what you're paying me for. What do you think? Oh, look at this. Oh, it's fantastic. I thought you might like that office for yourself. Well, I think it's best if you have the biggest office and then if David or any of the girls want to come and see where I work, it's easier to pretend I'm your secretary or something. Whatever you say, you're the boss. Oh, there is one other thing. If we are going to set up a trust, we do need a minimum of three trustees. Why? Well, to act as a committee. It's a charity commission requirement. You mean I have to tell at least three other people about the money? No, one other. You can be a trustee yourself and I can be one if you want me to be. Yes, of course. Right. Well, you just have to find one other person then. Again? We met at your mother's birthday party. You haven't got a key, have you? I mean, I mean, my mother hasn't given you one for emergencies or anything. Yes. Yes, she has. Uh, I'm locked out. I I'm not quite sure where it is. I'll try next door. I I've just been sent down from university. Have you? Oh, dear. I've just been to the garden centre. What's this? What? It's a memo from head office. I see. It's not for you, it's for me. Oh. Giving the green light to my request to be transferred to the Farsley branch. Well, you did ask to be transferred to the Farsley branch. Six months ago, before we started, and then I withdrew it, if you recall. Well, it'd be handy for you, Farsley. It's more your side of town. You'd not need to fight your way into Leeds every morning. You've done this. I have not. Well, I'm not going. Well, why don't you think about it? I've already sent a memo back, reminding them that I withdrew my request two weeks after I made it. But I'm more than happy where I am. Here. With you. She's gone into town, your mum. She's got an interview for a job. A job? What job? She never said. How's your dad? Alison! Alison! Oh, where's Alison? Oh, she's gone for an interview, apparently. An interview? What for? A job. Uh, can you drive? I need to get to a hospital. I think I'm going to pass out. Oh. It's typical. Not only is Alison out, but it's the one day in the month when Mike chooses to actually go in and do some lecturing or have a seminar, whatever he does. I know this is difficult, but could you try and drive somewhat more smoothly? I'm losing blood here. Sorry. Sorry. Ah. Stupid, sodding garden folk. I mean, why don't they make things properly, for God's sake? I could bleed to death here and no one would even notice, let alone care. He certainly wouldn't. 
He'd probably say, oh, it's only a scratch, Megan. He would. I remember when I died giving birth to Spike. Spike? My eldest, he's eight. Plays the piano phenomenally well. You've probably heard him. No. I've suffered for that child. I was in labor for three months. The lights have changed. They wanted to induce him, so I said, fine, out with the ropes and the winch. But oh no, he wanted a natural birth. I'm not having a child with a head shaped like a banana, for God's sake. Have you ever given birth? No. Well, don't. It's like shitting a tank. Of course, that's when the vocal cords went haywire. If I ever did, heaven forfend, ever, ever manage to get back on stage, they'd probably only be able to hear me in the front row of the stalls. Shit. Keep Shit. going, keep going. Shit. I'll take responsibility. This is life and death here. Anyway, it's only a fiat. Why are you doing this? I've told you. You think there's more to it? Well, there isn't. Fine. Except, if there is more to it, I, I suppose it's just that I want to do something they don't know about for once. I want to have a big, juicy secret. Do you think I'm mad? Utterly. And I want to see if it works. I want to see if I can do it. Because if I can't, if it fails, then I'd rather they didn't even know I tried. No, don't tell me I'm in the wrong place, you stupid little fart. I'm not senile. Marion! Oh, there she is! Sorry, love, I was only teasing. <sighs> <laughs> oh, I never had you down as somebody who'd hate in a place like this. I don't, as a rule. No, it's fur coats and no knickers of salt that come in here. You don't have to tell me. I've seen it all before. Would you like a drink? Who is your friend? Oh, sorry. Marion, this is Pauline. Pauline, this is Marion. Hello. I've known Marion a long time. She knows a lot about life. I want her to be the third trustee. Does she know? About the money, yes. I told her on the phone. I rang her up when you went to the loo. When you were pulling your knickers up, she told me to get down here in a taxi, and I did. Million. She's a dark horse, isn't she? Did somebody say something about a drink? I should cook. I'll have a bucket of champagne, and that's just for starters. All right! Well, let's all get tiddly. You must think I'm dreadful. No, no, not at all, no. Lordy. I'm sure bottles of whiskey are smaller than they used to be. I have another one of your fags. Just the one. You know, I haven't smoked since Carlisle. How long's that, how old Spike? Eight years. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. I smoke in the garden when they're all out. Why? Why am I afraid to say, this is me, I smoke, I like it? That's what marriage does to you, Virginia. It, I wouldn't know. No. Sometimes I wish I didn't. I know it's cruel saying it, but it's true. Sometimes I could do without the lot of them. I miss the old days, I do. Digs. Quick coffee snatch between rehearsals. Sex. Oh, I used to be good at sex. Of course, I don't get enough practice these days. I keep thinking I ought to have an affair. Hello, Mommy. What's Thursday? Uh, uh, Spike, piano, Felix, easel. Mommy will be through in two minutes. I didn't know it was so late. I thought it was still lunchtime. I'll have to go. It's been... Lovely chatting. We must do it again sometime. Bye-bye. Where the hell have you been? What are you doing here? When did you start swanning around in taxis? You all right? I've been sent down.
you know we love you. Me, Jesus. She could have guessed you ain't been there five minutes. Can you try and keep your voice down? Where is she? David, don't. You always have to draw attention to yourself, don't you? I'm not having them sitting around here all day on our backside. Didn't a precious, boofy English teacher give you the parts you wanted then? Did you just give you the like, fifth messenger ten times removed? I am Antigone! Sod you! Sod you! She'll have to get a job if she's leaving. I've told her that. Oh, she'll have to get a job. What job? She's not qualified to do a job. Perhaps she just needs a little bit of time to sort herself out and find out what she really wants. She doesn't know what she wants. She never did. She wants to get herself off the university and get some proper qualifications. That's what she wants. Yes, well, maybe. But she has to reach that decision by herself in her own time. Oh, really? And what's she planning on doing until then, eh? Living here, no doubt. At our expense. My expense. Oh, surprise, surprise. We should have known it'd all boil down to money. You stay out of this. It's got nothing to do with you. Oh, yeah, I forgot. No one's allowed an opinion except you. Sarah, don't talk to your dad like that. She wants to buckle down and get on with it like I had to. Okay, okay. David, she's not happy. She hasn't been happy there for a while. Happy? What do you mean she's not happy? You don't go to university to be happy. You go there to learn. What are you all dressed up for? Oh, well, I went for an interview for a job. A what job? I did tell you. No, you didn't. No, I did. What job? With an accountant. Doing what? I don't know, but of all sorts, really. What's the salary? Oh, here we go. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> you didn't ask. We're not all obsessed with money. Is this full time? It will be, yeah. Nine to five, that sort of thing. If you get it. Well, have you thought this through? Coming home and having to start cooking and cleaning and God knows what? Yeah, well, if everybody's prepared to pull their own weight a little bit more, there's no reason why there should be a problem, is there? Well, no. Only part-time would have been better to start with, at least. It's too late. I'm going to have to find out about this money. It's too late. They've asked me to start tomorrow. What? And I've said yes. <laughs>